Now that we have a good idea of the four dimensions of SEO ranking factors, I want to look at a brief history of SEO. One of the big questions that I always get in SEO is, is SEO constantly changing? And yes, it is. Google changes the algorithm all the time and there's lots of big changes. And that's why we try to simplify this with the dimensions of SEO and saying these are the areas you need to pay attention to instead of chasing the algorithm. And instead of trying to always figure out what Google's doing, try to figure out the general direction they're headed with regards to relevance and what they're going to change and, and just kind of roll with the punches and be able to change your site accordingly and improve in the areas and just constantly improve so that you stay relevant to search engine changes. So Dr. Pete's actually said, and Google has said under oath, Eric Schmidt testified before Congress and said they made 516 changes in 2010. That's a change and a half a day. And Dr. Pete was quoted with saying, we're chasing two runaway animals while the entire zoo is stampeding towards grandma's house. And he's referring to panda and penguin. And he says, we're doing bad SEO along the way. And he says, we're paying attention to these updates, but we're not doing good SEO and we're not using our fundamentals and best practices. We're not using our understanding and knowledge of the algorithm to build a better site. We're trying to chase and understand the algorithm. So don't try to chase and understand the algorithm. It's obviously complex. They've been tweaking it for years. Lots of doctors, PhDs, and very smart people working on the relevance of the algorithm. And you need to just pay attention to the significant events, the very big changes that change the way that SEOs built websites and marketed websites. Some of these changes were the local results and how they're geo-targeted with 10-pack and 7-pack and including local businesses and results in national search results, personalization and customization based on web history and people being logged in. This obviously has a strong influence. Universal search and video and images. Google Plus now has a significant impact on Google search results certainly when people are logged in. The knowledge graph is important. Panda and Penguin updates were huge throughout the SEO community and just kind of ridding those sites that were not playing by the rules. And a lot of people were violating Google guidelines and a lot of SEOs paid the price during those updates. And, and they're still chasing their tail with those algorithm updates. Uh, not provided and not being able to see keyword referral data in Google Analytics was a significant change as well that kind of put a blindfold on SEOs in, in regards to referral data and quantifying with analytics. If you want to know more about the overall algorithm change history, there's lots and lots of updates. Like I said, you don't want to necessarily chase them all, but these are significant ones. And I liked a, a quote from Rand here that said, with the release of yippity gobbly wobbly, Google has changed the search game forever. Forget about classic SEO. It's dead from now on. It's all going to be about blah, blah, blah. And that happens about once a month in SEO. And those are the things you don't really want to get caught up in. You want to make sure it's a significant change and you want to stay focused on building a better website, making it more accessible, doing better keyword research, doing better outreach, doing better on-page optimization, and just better site optimization as a whole. It is important to have some idea of the changes throughout history. And again, you can reference these at the moz.com Google algorithm change history. And they keep this very up to date with even just minor changes. There's a lot of time and energy that goes into making Google the black box that it is. So we don't want to chase all 200 ranking factors, but it is important to know the top ranking factors. And those have changed and got more complicated over time. It was once very simple. In 2005, when Moz originally did their ranking factors, it was pretty simple in terms of the types of things they were tracking. Title tag, anchor text of links, keyword use in document, subject matter, global link popularity, and then keyword spamming being the all-inclusive negative indicator. In 2007, it changed a little bit, and they, they changed the types of things they were looking at, and you could see the complexity of the factors was, was more significant. There was keyword use in title tag, global link popularity, anchor text of an inbound link, link popularity of a site in topical community. And it only continued to get more complex as we looked at more nuanced versions of these signals and ranking factors. In 2009, it was almost 70% of people thought anchor text was important from external links. It was a very significant part of the ranking factors was links in general. It was 60 or 70% was kind of the agreed upon influence of those search ranking factors. And then that started to kind of diminish over time through 2011. And it shifted a little bit more to social media and social metrics. And we're continuing to see that shift. 
and we'll talk about some of the changes here in the brief history of SEO. Really what spawns a lot of this development and relevance and, and the major problems come from Black Hat webmasters. They're the ones trying to make money with any and all costs, and engineers are focused on search relevance, and Black Hat webmasters just want to rank in the search engines. If it violates the Google guidelines, it's, it's Black Hat. Um, some of the areas have been deemed Gray Hat in the past, but if you're violating Google guidelines, you're, you're on kind of the wrong side of the fence and it's their world and we just play in it. So don't violate these guidelines with scraped content, doorway pages, hidden text links, buying text links, link schemes. These are all problems that will kind of put you in the Black Hat camp when it comes to Google. And if you're violating those guidelines, you run the risk of a penalty or being banned from their index. So let's look a little bit more at the factors timeline. You know, before Google came along, it was mainly on-page keyword use and metadata with things like Metacrawler and Alta Vista. Then they introduced PageRank and on page, so they were looking at off site factors and on page factors. Then they started looking at things like anchor text and the keywords in the anchor text linking to the domain in question, and then domain name and page rank. And, and then we added some additional features and functionality and signals that the search engines were looking at. And this has gotten more and more complex over time. Even before search engines, there were these directories, and a website directory like Yahoo or Best of the Web just organized websites topically and were kind of the forefathers to search engines. Then we had the on-page factors that I mentioned with Yahoo, AltaVista, and Google came along and said, hey, let's, let's look at other sites linking to other sites and use that as our main signal with PageRank or what they called Backrub when they first started it. And this was just looking at the links of sites inbound to other sites and evaluating the relevance and merit and popularity based on those inbound links. So around 2004, we had the Florida update, which hit a lot of people very hard in the world of SEO and e-commerce. It was right before the holidays. And Google finally said, hey, we're going to start using some of these historic off-site factors that we've been collecting. And we're not going to allow you to just use run-of-site text links anymore that say your keywords. And that was the first filtering of links and, and other historic off-site factors and really had a big impact in the fall of 2003. Now in 2004, they got better at crawling and with improved infrastructure and more hard disk space available, they were able to crawl and store more information. So they improved that system, that infrastructure, that turned into the first iterations of trust and authority, which was deemed the Google sandbox at the time. And this just meant that if there was a new site, you couldn't get it to rank in the search engines right away because there was some importance to that authority and trust. And you were kind of guilty until proven innocent with a new website. And you couldn't just rank, you know, in a week or two. You had to prove your trust and authority through links, through other factors to kind of get out of that sandbox. And this was a big change of thinking for SEOs. Another large and significant change was Google's duplicate content filtering. They had problems with people just putting AdSense or Amazon affiliate feeds on a website and scraping other people's content and sending it back through the search engine. And it became this game of arbitrage for affiliates, just kind of scraping and stealing people's content. And so Google had to find a way to filter that content and determine who the rightful owner was, the original source of that document, and the authority of that document. And their duplicate content filtering kind of started around that time, and they've gotten better and better at doing that. You have to be aware of how Google filters duplicate content, and there's large sections of the course dedicated to that, because you can get yourself in trouble with duplicate content and really do detriment to your site quality as a whole if you have too much duplicate content or if somebody's duplicating your content. 2006 as well was one of the first times that Google came out and said we reserve the right to do human editorial. They have a quality raters handbook that you can see here where people rate websites based on quality guidelines. And if they don't meet those guidelines, then they may get filtered or penalized. And this was the first time they said we do this at a human editorial level as well as an algorithmic level. And we reserve the right to review your website and penalize it as necessary. In addition to human editorial, there was the advent of universal or blended search. This included video, news, maps, local, 
all these things and obviously was a, a very big change in the types of search results. It wasn't just 10 blue links anymore. It was other vertical, universal, blended type search. One of the bigger controversies in the world of SEO started in about 2007 and a little bit preceding that with people buying and selling links and PageRank. And obviously Google came out and said, we don't want you doing this. Google toolbar page rank is for entertainment purposes only. And they proceeded to ban some of the networks that were selling links as well as the individual selling links. And subsequently, the people buying links in the future with specifically Penguin, there was link-based penalties for unnatural linking for purchasing links. And they came out around this time and said, hey, toolbar page rank is for entertainment purposes only, and it actually isn't a good indicator of link value. So we started getting things like Moz rank or AC rank from Majestic SEO, and these were helpful indicators to see a website or web page's actual page rank. Along the same time, in the next couple of years, they continued to improve the infrastructure with what they called the caffeine update. And this paved the way for more real-time search and more real-time answers at the query level to improve relevance and user satisfaction. From 2009 to 2014, local improved a lot, as well as personalization. There were results based on proximity. If I'm in Miami and I do a search for restaurants, I get Miami restaurants and maps, and I get the Google carousel. And these types of factors had a big impact on the types of results and what we saw in that vertical creep that we talked about earlier. The personalization of search has had a big impact on search engine optimization. When you're logged in as a Google user, your web history may impact the search results that you receive. Based on your past history, if you're searching for Apple, you may get a fruit tree if you're a farmer, and you may get a computer result if you're a tech nerd. There's also more subtle variations of this type of personalization that we see in search. Google Plus launched in 2011 and had 540 million users in only two years. They have over a billion Android devices activated, and there's 30 million click-to-calls each month. For a local business, these are huge. I can say personally with our local business, the click-to-call has a very large impact on our local business. So Google Plus and the way that handled places and maps has really had a big impact on Google search results. The other big significant changes in the world of SEO were 2011 with Panda, 2012 with Penguin, and then the subsequent updates regarding those. Panda focused more around on-site factors and uh, thinning out the content farms, people that were just cranking out low quality content and focused more on human quality indicators of engagement and relevance, time on site, this sort of thing. People, if you had that high bounce rate before Panda, after Panda, you were no longer ranking. And with the Penguin, this was more geared and aimed at sites violating Google guidelines with regards to links and enforcing those rules that they had set in place to say, hey, don't use keyword target anchor text all the time. Don't use unnatural link sources and the penguin update and filter really hurt those sites that were violating those guidelines. If you're curious about if you suffered a penguin or panda update, you can check out this very handy tool, the penguin tool, and this will import your Google analytics and show you the timeline factors from Moz and show you if it lines up with one of those updates to see if perhaps you were filtered because of some of these issues and helps you identify some of those issues and, and fix those problems. So a quick aside, I can no longer show Bob Barker here, but how SEO is like the price is right. You have the initial game where you just get indexed. You know, maybe you play Plinko if you're playing price is right. And you get your site indexed, you get some authority, you get to the showcase and you spin that wheel and you try to get a dollar and you get some links. And then you win the showcase and you're in the showcase showdown. And then what happens in the showcase showdown is you bid and you try to get as close to the price of that showcase without going over. But if you go over, you lose completely. And this is the same thing with anchor text and link diversity. If you get too much anchor text for the same phrase, you're deemed over-optimized. And that's how SEO is like the price is right. If you don't have enough link diversity, you're over-optimized. 
and you will lose that showcase showdown because you bid over what you should have bid. This idea of over-optimization comes from bad linking thinking or stinking linking thinking. It comes from having too many of a certain type of link, like paid links, forum spam, blog spam, mass directory submissions, no diversity in your anchor text, too much repetition, too much keyword stuffing. And this can cause a penalty filter or banning. A penalty is a pretty serious offense. It could be at 30 to 120 days and may require manual re-inclusion. It can be algorithmic or manual, like we mentioned earlier. If a human reviews it and said this is a penalty, you may suffer that penalty from a manual perspective. You can do a re-inclusion request through Webmaster's tools if you need to, but don't do this until you know that's the case. If it's just a filter, it's algorithmic, it's the most common, you might just drop a few places, that's not a penalty. If you're just dropping a few places, that's not a penalty. If your whole site tanks for 50% of your search traffic, that's a penalty. And a banning is when they just get rid of your site altogether, and you really have to be pretty egregious for something like that to happen. So most of the time, it's just a filter, not a penalty. Uh, but be aware of these potential penalties, filters, and bannings. The last significant event in recent history is not provided, uh, and we're no longer able to see keyword referral data through Google Analytics, which has kind of blindfolded and, and made some significant problems for SEOs, but also created some opportunities as well. So if you want to know the entire history, again, check out the Google algorithm history at Moz. We covered a lot of information, including the four dimensions of SEO, some search ranking factor intro, so we know about some of the signals of search ranking, and we did a very brief history of SEO and some of the significant changes over the last 15 or 20 years. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a wonderful newfound understanding of search engine optimization.